Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm gonna to go over a standardized high school math test. This is actually from Victoria, Australia, but it's a really great comprehensive math test. It covers pre-algebra skills, algebra skills, geometry skills, and some algebra two skills, a lot of geometric reasoning and general reasoning skills. Doing well on any standardized math test really takes practice. What I would do is I go to the description print out the PDF of this test, have a nice sharp pencil, sit in a nice quiet testing um, environment, and then take this test. The way I would do it is I would do a few problems, and then I would play the video and see how, how I solve them, and then pause the video and do a few more problems. Doing well on these tests is kind of getting in the swing of things, learning some of the tips and tricks, and also kind of knowing a lot of your math facts. I have three key tips to doing well on any standardized math test. Number one is mark up the test as much as possible. That'll help um, eliminate careless mistakes. And also if there's extra time at the end, it'll allow you to go back and take off right where you left off. Number two is cross out any answers that don't make sense so that a lot of times it's easier to go from the answer and plugging them back in. And you could, you could do a lot of the problems by just looking at the answers and eliminating answers that don't make sense. Number three is skip problems that are too hard. So the hardest problem on here has the same weight as the easiest problem. So don't spend too much time trying to figure out a really hard problem that you might not get anyway and miss a bunch of easy problems. This is a standardized test. You only have 30 minutes, so it's a really quick test and there are no calculators involved, meaning you gotta look for the tip and trick in every problem. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting right here on number one, I pause the video again. Number one is all about order of operations and negatives. So I have negative 10 plus a negative three, minus a negative four. And the way I remember this, is like there's a guy on a diving board, he jumps up off the diving board, goes through the surface of the water. Minus a negative is a positive. Negative 10 plus negative three, negative 13, negative 13, negative 13 plus four is negative nine, negative nine plus five is negative four. There's my answer right there, answer C. The next one as well is a lot about negatives and positives. Negatives divided by a negative will be a positive. 96 divided by six, it's gonna go in there one time, 36 will be six. So then I have 16, negative divided by negative is positive 16. 16 divided by eight is gonna be equal to two. And there's my answer, answer A right there. Number three, Joe bought a used car for $6,000 and paid 15% deposit. How much did he still have to pay? So I don't wanna figure out you know, the deposit amount, I gotta do that first and then subtract it from that amount. 15 of 6,000, well I can figure out 10% of 6,000 is 600. So that's 10% of 6,000. 5% is half of that, so that's another 300. So I paid a total of 900 as a down payment, but I wanna know how much still he has to pay. The 900 from 6,000 is 51. Number four here is all about order of operations. First, I really need to do this first. Eight minus 12 is negative four. And then I have five times negative two is negative 10. Minus that negative four, minus the negative, and then plus, I have to do my division before I do that addition. 16 divided by negative eight is negative two. So I got negative 10 plus a negative four. Again, that's like, I mean, negative 10 minus negative four is like negative 10 plus four is negative six, plus negative two is negative eight, answer B. Question number five, what is 8% of 600? So I could write that out, or I could think eight times six is 48, so I could get, $48, and then my check is 10% of 600 is 60 bucks. So I can see that that's in the ballpark and that seems like the right amount right there. So that's the answer C right there, 48. Which is the longest distance 
So these right here, after all put in the same um, unit, this is centimeters, meters, millimeters, meters, and kilometers. So I think there's meters is the most common out of all of these, so I'll put them in meters. Point thousand meters to the kilometer. Point one times a thousand is a hundred meters. It's gonna be hundred meters more than that, more than that. Centimeters to the meter is a hundred, so this is 35 meters. And then lastly, I gotta divide by a thousand for milliliters, so this is 75 meters. So now I have them all, all the same measurement. 0.1 kilometer is the largest amount right there. If you go ahead and do this one right here, the perimeter of the shapes, I need to go all the way around. Well, if this bottom is 25, that means this plus that plus that also has to be 25. So I have a 25 on the bottom, and then the 25 is the sum of those three. This is 10, that means this is 10. That means this plus this right here is 22. The 10 and the 12, and this and this, the same thing, 22. I'm gonna add up all the sides. 50 and 44 is 94. And we're all in centimeters. And then there's my answer right there, D, 94. Question number eight, if the length of the shorter arc AB, so this arc right here is 22 centimeters long, and C is the center of the circle, find the circumference of the circle. So I gotta go all the way around the whole circle. Well, I know a full angle rotation all the way around is 360 degrees, and I've only traveled 45 of that 360. So I could reduce that 45 degrees over 360 to get a ratio. 45 will go into here eight times. All right, 90, 180, 360. So it'll go in there eight times. So that means if this angle is 45 and this arc length is 22, then if the angle were 360, it would be eight times that length. So I'm gonna take that 22 centimeters and multiply it by eight, because it's gonna be eight times all the way around. 22 times eight is 160 plus 16, 176 centimeters. And this is kind of a logic reasoning problem right here. It's kind of nonsensical, but to see if you could decode this nonsense. So if two flags make a flog, so if I got a flog, that means I got two flags. I mean, unless this is something in Australia that I don't know. So two flags make a flog, and three flogs, that means I'm gonna have three flogs now, right? Three flogs make a flug. How many flags are in 12 of these things? Well, I can see I got two, four, six. So there are gonna be six flags equals one flug. So that graphic for me helps a lot. So I got six flags and one flug, and now I got 12 of these things. So that means I got six times 12, or 72. And there's my answer right there. Question number 10, I have two and one thirds is to four and a thirds, then seven is to what? So I'm gonna turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions. Two times three is six, plus one is seven thirds. So that first thing is seven thirds, and it is divided by four and one third. So four times three, 12, plus one is 13 thirds. So I'm saying that first thing is to the second thing. So what that is really the same thing as saying is 7 thirds divided by 13 thirds is the same thing as saying 7 thirds times the reciprocal of the second fraction, 3 thirteenths. Now I'm multiplying fractions, my threes will cancel, and that'll give me 7 is to 13. So 7 is to that square right there, which is 13. Number 11, concrete is by mixing screening. So I have screenings, cement, and sand at a ratio of three to one to 15. So a total of 19. How much sand would be needed 
to make 125 tons of concrete. So I'm going to actually do 125 divided by 19. That's actually not going to go in there very much, but it's about, what is that, 6? Let's say it's about 6. If it's about 6, um, how much sand would be needed? That'd be 6 times the number of sand, 3, and there's nothing even close. So even if I didn't do that, so I could see none of these answers are even close to what that number would be. Um, so it would be answer E. Question number 12 right here. Um, these two angles here are a linear pair, meaning they add up to 180. So 180 minus 127 is 53. All three angles of a triangle add up to 180. 87 and 53. 140. So 180 minus 140 is 40. So it would be answer B. Number 13 is parallel lines cut by a transversal. These arrows are saying parallel, and then these three lines are parallel. Um, these angles are all congruent, 56, 56, 56. And then this one right here is going to actually be the supplement of that one. So it's going to be 180 minus 56, or 124. So 124 is answer A right here. The other way is if this is 56, this is 56, alternate interior angles are congruent, and then I have a linear pair right there. Number 14, how many of the students study for more than eight hours? So that does not include eight, it's everybody beyond eight. So this is the number of hours studied. It's a frequency distribution. And then we're gonna look up here to see how many people actually studied that amount. So eight and study nine hours. Call it six have studied 10 hours. Three have studied 11 hours. And five have studied 12 hours. So this is more than that's kind of what the point of the problem is, is like a greater than versus a greater than or equal to. 14 and 3 is 17. 17 and 5 is 22. Here's my answer, answer A, 22. So that's the answer there. The next problem, which won't fit on the screen, is how many students for six hours or less, so that's inclusive. So it's the six, the five, the four, and the three. So six or less versus this one is more than eight. So how many students have studied at six? Looks like six, then five, three, four, four, and then three, two. So number question 15 would be the sum of those four numbers, six, nine, 15. Two dice are thrown. What's the probability of total is 10? Well, you could get like a one and a one, a one and a two, a one and a three, all the way up to a one and a six. Or you could get a two and a one, oops, two and a one, three and a one, a four and a one. So I could see there are 36 outcomes. Right down here in the bottom corner, I could get a six and a six, a six and a five, six and a four, and then right here is gonna be a five and a five. So the way I could get a 10 would be these three outcomes right here. The dice add up to a 10, so it'd be a six and a four, a five and a five, and a four and a six, so there are three ways to get a 10. Out of this whole grid is 36, so the answer is 3 out of 36. And then we'd have to reduce that fraction. 3 goes into 3 one time, and then 36 12 times. There's my answer right there, answer B. The gradient of this line right here, gradient is rise over run. So rise is the difference in the y values. Run is the difference in the x values. This first value is x, second value is y. So to go from five on the x-axis to negative one will be six, but I'm running from right to left, so that's negative six. And then my y values, I go from a negative one up to a three, so it's four. My rise is four over negative six, or negative two-thirds. So this answer right here for number 17 is negative two-thirds. Number 18, the y-intercept of the graph could only be my y-axis, it's a negative value. So no negative y, no negative y, no negative y, no negative y. Only answer would be D with a y-intercept that's a negative value. X is six or less, so that means X 
is equal to six or less. So that's an inequality. It could be equal to or less than. And then it is more than negative five, but not equal to. So again, it's that idea of being inclusive. So x is, where's that one? Right. X is less than or equal to six, but greater than negative five. Answer B right there. Expand and simplify. You have to distribute this negative six through the quantity. So negative six times two x is negative 12 x. Negative six times negative three is 18. And then I still have that negative 11. So negative 12 x, 18 minus 11 is seven. So I'm looking for a negative 12 x and a positive seven. Answer B right there. Number 21 right here, this is a net problem. I take this thing and I open it up. I can see it's gonna be three rectangles and a pair of triangles because I could count one, two, three, four, five surfaces. So that can't be that one. Whoops. Oh, I can't move it up. Um, number 21 is a net, meaning that if I were to open up this solid and lay it flat on a piece of paper, I can have one, two, three rectangles and two triangles, and those two triangles will be reflections on each other, like this here, but this does not have the three rectangles, so it can't be that one. Can't be this one either. That one doesn't really make any sense, and neither does this one as it folds up. Um, so this one would be answer E. It's a really good one to mark up the diagram with. Um, a diagram shows a field. She starts at A, runs to B, from B to D, so it's the hypotenuse, from D to C, from C to A. How long is that red line? Well, if that's 30, that's 30. You're gonna have to use a Pythagorean theorem. No calculators on this test, so it should be an easy one. 30 squared plus 40 squared is 50 squared. If that's 50, that's also 50. So I have 50 and 50, 100. 30 and 30, 60, or a total of 160 meters. There's my answer right there. Simplify the third, I don't know what that means, but simplify that radical. So I have a radical 56 right here. I'm looking at the factors in there. I can split that in half to get a 28 and a two. I can split that in half to get a seven and a four. Four is a two and a two. For every pair, one comes out. So there's a pair right here, a pair of twos. One comes out, there's no pair for that two or that seven, so they stay in. So seven times two is 14. And then the check on that is I could square that two and put it back in. Four times 14 is 56. But don't forget, I still have this three in the front there. So that three would be out front. It's all multiplication. Three times two is six. Six root 14. There it is right there, answer C. Again, um, go to the description in here and print this test out and then do the problems yourself and then watch how I do them. And also while I'm thinking of it, please comment if you've taken a test like this, your thoughts on it and any tips or tricks you might have. Okay, find the length of X. That's a good one because it would be easy to find the perimeter, but I don't want the perimeter. I only want this length right here. If this is three and this is five, this would also be three and this would be two. And then if that's four, that's four. Again, Pythagorean theorem, two squared, two squared plus four squared equals x squared. 20 equals x squared, square root of both sides. 20 is made up of a four and a five, a four is a pair of twos. So the square root of 20 would be two root five. So my answer would be two root five. It's a linear measurement in centimeters. Answer B right there. 25, the rectangular box is dimension sewn. What is the length of AG? So again, I would mark that up like this. A to G is like the longest tool you could have in the toolbox. It's actually a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. It's kind of hard to see. Let me change colors here. But this diagonal right here flat on the bottom of the box. I could use the Pythagorean theorem and say six squared. Right, this is a right triangle in the bottom of the box. Six squared plus eight squared 
36, 864 is 100, square root of that is 10. So that bottom blue diagonal is 10. And then the, the red one from the bottom corner to the top corner is going to be 10 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared, Pythagorean theorem. So 10 squared plus 2 squared is going to give me that c squared equals c squared, square root of both sides. All my answers are square root, so I'm going to simplify the square root of 104. That's made up of a 52 and a 2, a 26 and a 2, a 13 and a 2. Only one pair there. Two, no pairs for those, so they stay in. So it's got to be 2 root 26. There it is, answer A. Number 26, Sam bought a car valued at $7,700. A year later, it decreased by two sevenths. So I'm going to figure out the amount it decreased, but what is the new value? So i got to figure out the amount it decreased and subtract that from the original amount. I do know the 7 and 7, so I'm going to do 7,700 times the two sevenths. It's a non-calculator test, so I know it's going to cancel out nicely. That and that will cancel to 11. 1,100 times 2 is 2,200. That's how much it decreased. So 2,200 from the 7,700 gives me 5,500. It's a natural distractor, so if you multiply them together, you want to grab A, but you got to read carefully and see what is the new value of the car. You could also multiply by five sevens. Okay, number 27, density equals mass times volume. What is the mass? So I'm looking for density equals mass divided by volume. And I have to have two of those variables um, to find the third. It does give me density is 1.2. This is asking me for mass, and then I gotta plug in my volume. Volume is gonna be the base area of 10. So that 10 times the height is 60. So my volume is 60. If this wasn't a time test, I really want to be careful of my units. But it's also another way to check. But part of this test is really the ability to go through pretty quick. 6 times 1 is 60. 0.2 times 60 is going to give me 12. So my answer is 72. So there's the answer right there, 728. What is the speed in meters per second? Again, units. That travels 30 kilometers in 20 minutes. So it goes 30 kilometers in 20 minutes. Again, this is a unit conversion. Uh, it should work out pretty well. I want to know meters per second. So there is one kilometer and a thousand meters. So my kilometers will cancel. I'll give me meters per minute. And then one minute. 60 seconds. Let's see if these are going to drop out pretty well. Minutes are gone. Um, 30 divided by 60 is 0.5. Right? So then I have 0.5 times 1,000, which is 500. So that's going to give me 500 meters per 20 seconds. 20 goes into 100 five times. Times five, it'll go into there 25 times. There's none of these. Number 29, um, solve for t. So I have to get this by itself. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by three. Those will cancel. Now I have 3r is equal to the quantity s plus t times p. Again, solving for t, I got to get that by itself. First, I'll get rid of the p on both sides. Those will cancel. Still solving for t, I'm going to subtract s from both sides, so this will be minus an s. So I have 3r over p minus s. Here it is. Answer e. And I think I'll wrap it up with problem number 30 here, and then do the other 30 in another test. So hopefully this video has helped you out. You know, the best way to do well on practical or math tests like this is really to practice. Um, there's a lot to them, but the more you practice, the more comfortable you get. Big part of this test is looking for the tips and tricks, especially without a calculator. So solve this equation, solve for x, I'll subtract 1 from both sides, and that's going to give me 
9 minus x over 3 is less than 10. Before I even do this, I know I have multiplication and division and the inequality. So I do know that when I multiply or divide by a negative, I've got to flip that thing, and I bet that's coming up there. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. These will cancel. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So 30 divided by 5 is going to give me 6. So then I have 9 minus x is less than 6. Subtract 9 from both sides. That's going to give me negative x is less than negative 3. Here it is. Divide both sides by negative 1. Multiply or divide. i got to flip that. That's going to give me a positive. I flip that sign. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. x is greater than 3. There's my answer right there. A lot of distractors that are close, but none of them are it. So that's problems 1 through 30. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and hit thumbs up. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.